Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're going to be covering a really cool topic that I've been meaning to cover more of, which is depth of field. So I want to show you guys a quick way that I came up with to generate some custom depth of field in Blender without actually using the camera settings. The way that it works is all in the compositor. So I'm just going to show you guys the nodes real quick and then we'll hop into it. So these are basically all the nodes that you'll need right here in the compositor. Um, and the way that they work is they basically take your rendered layer and then they run it through a blur node with another mix node and then run it back into the compositor. But we're actually plugging in into the mix here our template that we're going to be using, which is basically a black and white gradient. We can use any gradient we want and it will actually show us what is going to be blurred and what is not going to be blurred. And we can actually basically paint out the parts that we want blurred and leave the parts that we want in focus um, easily with this color ramp. So I'm going to show you guys how to set all of this up and then I'm going to show you guys a way to actually generate your own gradients within Blender. So let me go ahead and open up a new Blender instance right here. I'm just going to save this to the desktop as blur. That's it. I'm going to save that. And then we're going to go ahead and snap to the camera. I'm going to go into rendered view real quick. I am going to go over to cycles. GPU. Um, everything should be set up. I think we just need to enable our Z pass, which is right here in the viewer view layers property. So go ahead and enable that Z pass. And then we're actually just going to make a quick scene here where the camera's kind of pointed up, move down, and we're going to just move some of these blocks around. So I'm going to go to my top down view. And this is just so we have something to actually use for our depth of field. So I'm just going to take my cube, duplicate it a few times, just like that just so we have some objects in our scene. That looks fine. And then I'm just gonna back the camera up a little bit, just so we have something going on here. Maybe give ourselves a little plane here, just make a little mock scene just for the tutorial. Um, and then maybe we'll just give these like a little, like a blue material or something. That looks fine. I'm just gonna move my camera up on the Z axis. And I think that's pretty much perfect. So again, we're just using this as an image so that we can actually uh, go ahead and use our depth of field effect. So obviously you could go into the camera, click on depth of field, select the object you want, and lower the f-stop. That's one way to achieve depth of field. However, the way that I came up with is to actually use the compositor. So let's go and head over to the compositor, click on use nodes, okay? And then we're going to add a couple of nodes in here. The first thing we're going to do is we're actually going to duplicate our rendered layers and put it down here. So we have two rendered layers and our composite so far. I then want you guys to add in a blur node, okay? And you want to hook it up right here. And then you want to go ahead and add in an image node right here. And then you want to add in a mix node and a viewer node. So we're going to put our mix node right here. And we're going to add in a viewer node. And then you're just going to plug everything up as follows. Our mix node is going to go out to our composite and our viewer. And then we're going to have our blur node connected to our first image socket here. And then our rendered layer is going, our second render layer is going to go into the second image socket of the mix. And then for our custom image map, that is going to plug right into the factor. So now you're not going to see anything yet. One, because we haven't rendered, and two, because we haven't selected our image map. So I'm going to first go over to our render settings. I'm just going to set the render to 10 samples so we get a really nice and quick render. And then when we actually go to import our image map, we want to use the same size image as our render. So I set up all of my images in Photoshop to actually be all these perfect gradients from the inside out, left, right, up, down, and they're all 1920 by 1080 pixels wide. So, or sorry, 1920 wide by 1080 tall. So I'm going to go ahead and select one of these. Uh, how about this one? And then I'm going to go ahead and render our image and let's just go ahead and see the result. As you can see, everything's done and it should be compositing. What did I miss here? Did I miss something? Oh, okay, guys, I'm so sorry. I do think I missed one thing. Let me check my, let me check my other nodes, make sure I'm not missing something here. Image to image. Try to change this instead of Gaussian to cubic. And then we want to adjust these values here. That's right. Okay, so we'll just make each one of these values 50 and then we're going to use cubic for our blur. And as you can see, we have our custom blur map working very nicely. And then basically you guys can just create anything you want in Photoshop to get that blur map. However, a lot of you might not have Photoshop and you want to still do this for cheap, which is totally fine. So I'm going to teach you guys how to create a custom color ramp in uh, Blender just on an image plane. We're going to face the camera towards the image plane 
export that image plane and go back and use it right here. So I'm actually going to pop open a new document in my other Blender instance here. I'm just going to put that on top of my screen here, delete my cube, delete my light, add in a plane, scale it up, and then I'm gonna center my camera. I'm just gonna put zero for every single value. I'm gonna bring my camera up on the Z axis like that. And then I'm gonna to snap to my camera view, keep dragging this up until we're just on the edges of the plane. It doesn't really matter what size your plane is, but I am going to apply that scale to the plane. And then I'm gonna head over to our um, rendered view. Um, I think I'm gonna stick with Eevee for now and then make our world color white. And then I'm just gonna save this real quick as color ramp gradient. And again, we're just using this to export the image. Head over to your shading tab, and then with your plane selected, we're gonna create a new material, and we're just going to add in a color ramp. We're gonna plug that into the base color, and then we're going to add in a radiant texture, and then we're gonna add in mapping, and a texture coordinate, like that. You guys can see all that, cool. Generated into the vector, vector into the FAC, should be good to go here in a second. And then as you can see, I can start to define my, my gradient just like this. Um, at the moment, we're gonna have to rotate it on the X axis. I'm just going to rotate that 40, negative 45 degrees. And as you can see, we have a perfect gradient right now. Um, actually, I'm not in rendered view. Okay, now I'm in rendered view. And then what we wanna do is we wanna kinda mess with this gradient to get it the way that we want. We can mess with the scale. We can mess with, um, with the actual color ramp itself. But as of right now, that is a linear gradient that should look great when we go to render. I'm actually gonna switch over to Cycles GPU. Um, and then I'm going to check to see if I have a light source. I do not. You guys can add one if you want. I don't think I'm going to add one. And then you can kind of mess with the specular. I'm gonna turn the specular all the way down so we get that nice, harsh black. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna render this image at literally 10 samples with denoising on. Let's go ahead and render this image. As you can see, the image renders super quick because we really only need this black and white gradient. Image, save as, I'm just gonna save it to my desktop as split gradient. I'm going to save it as PNG, X out of this, minimize this instance of Blender, and then I'm gonna load up our image map right here. I'm gonna search for it on my desktop. There it is right there. As you can see, even uh, we don't even really have to re-render, but it looks pretty much exactly the same because it's more or less the same thing. So as you can see, we have our blurred gradient right there. It looks really good. And then if we wanted to adjust it, we would open back up our gradient map and then we can adjust the white as follows. So sometimes when you have slight gray, you're still gonna get that blur. So you want it to be a pretty pure white. So I'm gonna pull this, um, this little marker right here just in a little bit so that we have very much a white side there. So let me go ahead and render that image again. And then we wait for that to render, and then I'm going to save it to the desktop as split gradient two. And I'm gonna show you guys the difference here. Again, you wanna have those harsh blacks and those harsh whites. Um, as you can see, we do have our, our blur working, but I am gonna switch this out for the other image. And as you can see, it's a lot more clear on this side now. And you guys can go ahead and mess with these values all you want. You can try 20, you can try 10, whatever you prefer. And again, you can adjust this on both axes. As you can see, when you adjust it a little bit too much on the Y axis, you get this crazy effect, which actually looks kind of cool. So if you guys wanted to use that, you could, and you guys can go ahead and mess with all of these blur settings here. Um, Gaussian blur is fine. I think I'm gonna keep these to a low value such as 20. And as you guys can see, we have a little bit of a depth of field effect with minimal effort. You don't even have to use Photoshop. I created all of those image maps because I thought they looked great. But again, here is the node setup if you guys wanna go ahead and copy that. I just thought this was a super creative way to accomplish depth of field without actually using the camera settings. Yes, you do have to do extra compositing, but if you're trying to achieve a tilt shift effect like you've probably seen in a lot of Instagram posts, this is easily achievable now in Blender. Now, if you wanted to take it a step further, you could open up the texture painting tab and actually paint in your custom color map. Um, again, you wanna use black and white, you wanna use harsh black and, and very harsh white because you don't want those middle gray uh, colors or you're gonna get some slight blur. Anything that's white is going to be in focus and anything that is black is going to be out of focus in your image. 
So keep that in mind as you're generating these images. Um, guys, that's pretty much it. I do hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I thought this was a super creative way to use the compositor to achieve a depth of field effect. If you guys like this, please consider joining my Patreon and supporting me on there, as well as joining the Discord and following me on Instagram. It would be much appreciated. We're approaching 10,000 followers on YouTube and 50,000 followers on Instagram. So we're making great strides here and we're hitting those milestones. It's super exciting and I'm super happy to have you guys as a part of this community. I hope you learned something. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you would like to see next and I will see you in the next tutorial.